I've always heard about how beautiful British Columbia is and I've always wanted to see it for myself. Now that things are easing up a little bit on restrictions and I saw a plane ticket for a 150 Canadian round trip, I knew I couldn't let this opportunity go to waste. I decided to do something I've never done before, and that's traveling solo. This is how I spent a weekend in Vancouver, British Columbia. This is a new face, game change. Flying by in real time, catching a deep wave at the right pace. Seeing with bright eyes. The first night was Friday. I landed at 9.30 p.m. I got out of the skytrain and was greeted by these tall skyscrapers and the sounds of a big city. Other cities that reminded me of it were New York and Hong Kong. I found my hotel and at 11 p.m. I had dinner at this Japanese restaurant and the food was so good and it was authentic. And it was delicious. I had beer, this pork tempura and it's not even my first day and I, yet I already liked the city. The next morning, I woke up to a rainy Vancouver. Apparently, it's natural state. I headed up to North Vancouver and visited Lynn Canyon Suspension Bridge. Finally, in Lynn Canyon, headed to the Lynn Canyon Suspension Bridge. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> oh my God, today, man. It's all free. I've never experienced anything like this before. It was slightly scary at first. Oh, imagine falling off from this height though. I got there early, so there weren't a lot of people yet, and I could take the time to take photos, take videos and stuff. It was a big trail, and every part of it was beautiful. It had gigantic trees that you can only find in the Pacific Northwest and moss and rivers and other things unique to the area. And if my trip stopped right here, I wouldn't even be mad because I really love this place and it was worth it coming here just for this alone. But I knew there was more to come in the coming days. So for lunch, I headed to Lonsdale Quay Market. It was a small market um, by the sea where they sell seafood and organic soap and other things. And I got this teriyaki meal and a boba for lunch. From here, you can ride the sea bus uh, to go to Waterfront. And this is where I rode the sea bus for the first time. So at this point, I've ridden the SkyTrain, the bus, and the sea bus. So if you're visiting Vancouver, just get yourself a day pass. You'll save so much money. You'll be able to ride pretty much every sort of transportation there. And I honestly had a lot of fun commuting everywhere with this one card. And with my phone running out of battery, I decided to relax in this building, which is humongous. It's a library, has nine floors and a rooftop garden. I ended the day by going to Gas Town and saw the steam clock, but if I'm being honest, this was the least impressive part of the tour. The neighborhood was was cute, but I don't know. And for dinner, I had this Fukuoka style ramen just outside my hotel. Day two was about culture and food. I started the day by going to Chinatown and visiting Dr. Sun Yat-sen Chinese Garden. In the middle of the city, they made what a typical scholar's garden in China would look like. You had these traditional looking rooms, pieces, um, and architecture it made you feel like you're in a whole different place. And it was a nice glimpse of Chinese culture. And my favorite part was probably when I met this Chinese man who excitedly explained to me some extra details of the designs that were used in the garden, which were very interesting. Next, I headed to Granville Island Public Market. The weather was clear and the breeze was temperate. It was a perfect day to be outside, so I was just relaxing by the waterfront, people watching, and people were just enjoying the wonderful weather. And from here, you have this wonderful view of Vancouver's waterfront. When it's not raining, Vancouver is definitely gorgeous. Oh yeah. For my food, I ate Lee's Donuts. I had to try the honey dipped ones. And this one is the matcha cheesecake, 10 out of 10. They were very delicious and they weren't even expensive. 
Then I had this spicy German bratwurst with sour cream, onions and sauerkraut. I would say this chill experience just hanging out here where the locals are is easily just as good as my adventure yesterday. And to take advantage of the good weather, I rented a bike and went cycling on the seawall. And although I did not explore Stanley Park that much, I decided to save that for next time because there will be a next time. And some parts of it were closed anyways and under renovation and stuff. And on my ride, I saw many cyclists and runners and just people enjoying the outdoors. And I could definitely tell that people here are more inclined to do more activities outside. But I mean, who wouldn't be when you have temperate weather all year round and have all these amazing walking and cycling infrastructure? As a cyclist myself, this is what I wish my bike paths looked like. But they don't. Okay, so today is a bit of a sad day because it's the last day. My flight was at 9 p.m. and I needed to be at the airport at around 6 or 7 p.m. So before I left, I really wanted to eat Japa Dog. It's another Vancouver food, basically Japanese style hot dogs. And I got the Okonomi flavor, which was like an Okonomiyaki hot dog. And it was delicious. There were many more Japanese themed uh, hot dogs there like uh, tonkatsu and other things and probably the best hot dog I've had in my life. And to end my trip, I went to see the Vancouver Aquarium, a not-for-profit aquarium with many interesting fishes and marine life, and this was located in Stanley Park. And as I got there, the sun was shining brightly, and it reminded me again of how beautiful this city can be. And there were many cherry blossoms as well in different parts of the city, so I was taking a lot of photos with them, so that was great. I saw this huge seal and other cute animals like penguins and frogs and monkeys a lot of things were there not just marine life and the funny part was when I got so excited I ran towards the glass where there were seals being fed and started filming them without realizing that a show was running and a lot of people were watching this show so I was pulled to the side by my bag and thankfully I didn't get into trouble and we laughed it off but it was kind of embarrassing uh, doing that then I watched this 4D show where we weren't allowed to record and overall that wasn't a bad way to end a wonderful weekend. This short trip was filled with so many memories and lessons that I will never forget. And after this whole thing I just feel a little bit more responsible now. I guess that's what a solo trip does to you. You make all of these decisions by yourself, for yourself, and if you get in trouble, you handle it yourself. So you learn to budget your hard-earned cash, you learn to spend all of them on food, just like me. Overall, I love Vancouver, and I'm glad this was my first destination of many more solo trips to come, if my parents allow. Oh, wow. Where else can you find a bustling metropolis with mountains and the ocean all in one place, which unlocks a plethora of outdoor activities and beautiful nature spots, while also being culturally diverse? not a lot of places come to mind and it ticks off everything I could ever want from a place and I've been to a couple of major cities around the world and in Canada but I think Vancouver might be my favorite out of all of them that's just my opinion will I live here probably not it's too expensive and it would probably be a different experience but will I come visit again oh yeah a hundred percent a hundred percent Through my window in June And it feels like the first time I met 